that, that's that's good. I think uh, we, I I can make this fast. So uh, <laughs> let's get the uh, rolling. Yeah, tranquilo. <laughs> I think the the clocks works differently in Latin America. <laughs> I have still my European clock here, so. Okay, uh, I think uh, we have finally cuttered every English-speaking person to one room. Uh, anyone uh, fala Portuguese? No. Si, si. I can translate myself. Plone esta muito bom. My name is uh, Mikko Ohtama, and I'm here to tell... Uh, about a little, little bit about Plon community, a little bit different angle that we had in the keynote. I'm also telling my own history why I started doing Plon, when I, why, what I'm not, why I'm not doing it anymore. And then we can have questions and uh, let's uh, go it fast so we can uh, catch up with the uh, dinner and stuff or oh, lunch. So uh, I'm, I'm coming from a country called Finland, Finlandia. Does anyone know where the Finland is? Good. I can tell you uh, today I'm very happy to be here in Brasilia, Brazil, because we have a first snow in Finland. It's snowing there, so I got this uh, cool blown woolly hat here. I can wear it during my talk so that it's not too cold for me here. <laughs> and uh, as, as everybody knows, uh, blown is. Uh, quite old uh, system. It has been uh, based on soap, which was started in 1908. And the plone itself was started some around 2000. And uh, I could say that it's the oldest living uh, CMS system we have today. And it, it, it's, it's so old even that uh, Guido van Rossum, who is the father of the Python, was working for the Digital Creations, who was the father of the soap. And, uh, Actually, the oldest uh, untouched uh, file in the uh, blown code base is uh, from 2000. So uh, we, we, we might even have uh, older code that we have uh, blown users itself. And that, that, that if, if you look uh, back into history, that explains a lot of things. And uh, because a blown is not uh, any uh, commerce, uh, uh, developed by any commercial organization, it uh, goes a little bit like this and this. It goes up and down and there and here. And uh, I think this is the best description I can tell how Plon happens, that you, you have a big government organizations like we had here in the keynote, and then you have uh, small independent developers. And then you go to a Plon conference, put them to the same place, give them some beer, and the Plon comes out from the door. And uh, how, how I got uh, involved myself in the plone, I was working for Nokia like a uh, very long time ago as a summer trainee. I learned to do Python there. And uh, I, I didn't work very long for Nokia. I didn't like the Symbian and stuff. And I, did, I think it was a good bet because uh, actually plone has outlived Nokia now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is actually how, how I started in the plone. I, uh, I did it as a, as a hobby. I, I wanted to build my own uh, website where you could track uh, usability bugs of open source software. And uh, because I had just learned Python, I wanted to use the Python to build uh, my site. And I was going through the options. And uh, around 2004, we had uh, as many Python CMS options as we have today, which is one, which is plone. And uh, I created some... Uh, code for plone uh, add-ons, and I pu pu published them on the plone.org. One, one was the data grid field, and uh, I then uh, forget plone for uh, like uh, 
to our one or two years. But then something happened. Uh, I was uh, doing uh, still uh, this no uh, Symbian and Nokia stuff in some other company, and I got the email from a lady in uh, London who was actually uh, offering me uh, money to work on Plone. And this was kind of, kind of cool because I was still uh, like a student. I was working for a very, very boring IT company. And then someone uh, comes to me and says just that here's money if you do some open source stuff for us. And then I started my own uh, <laughs> business. I got involved in Plown community and it was the uh, first time I went to uh, Napoli where I met some guys. Uh, I think I can, if I can see them here. The Dutch guys, 40 kids, are you here? Yeah, the pastas, they had, uh, on the last night, they took me out to the pizza and they gave me some beer and I, I almost missed my flight. <laughs> but some years later, they uh, finished it. They took me to Netherlands and gave me some beer and I actually missed my flight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm happy for that. I, uh, my, uh, I started uh, hiring my friends for my consultant business. We did uh, some other stuff as blown. And I can tell that uh, there are two, two, two happy days in my life. One is I start my own company, and the second one is that I close it down. <laughs> and may, uh, well, maybe the third day is that I uh, left my ex-girlfriend, but uh, it's, it's the same. <laughs> and uh, now we can talk about the problem of blown. The problem of the blown is that everybody loves blown. I see here somebody who, uh, who is a content editor and working on the blown website and doesn't love blown. No, I thought so. So the problem is that everybody loves blown. So why it's not the most popular CMs in the world? And this is the answer. <laughs> blown drives you smoking. It's, it's a, in, 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 if, you, if you open the hood and watch inside the blown, you can see that it's a little bit mess there. So, and uh, I think this is uh, mostly due to history that there's a lot of things. And every time a blown uh, community tries to fix something, they build a new thing. And then you have uh, two problems. And then you build, uh, try to fix uh, that one with the new component and you have three problems. And uh, now we have uh, plenty of problems in our hand and uh, blown is not so fun anymore. But it's okay if you don't know what's happening inside the Plone. So uh, right now, uh, Plone is in a state that uh, if, you, if you are not actually doing Plone, you don't want to start doing Plone. But if you are uh, doing Plone in a business like a government website or the university website, it's very, very good product there. But uh, unlike when I started doing Plone like uh, five years ago, Plown was uh, more generic and you could sol solve different problems with Plown, but uh, nowadays it's, it's very, very good for big organizations, but it's not uh, very, very good if you want to do a WordPress style uh, web freelancing and build small sites and stuff like that. So Plown has kind of uh, went to one place and when it, when it, when it has gone there, it's like a evolu dead end in evolution, that when you are there, it's, it's, it's very hard to go back where you have been before. And that's what I think is happening here. And uh, when, when I, was, I was not doing the big government business, so uh, it was uh, not so fun to do Plone anymore if you don't have a customers and money. And this business is growing, so uh, I stopped doing it. I could have uh, doing this uh, consultant stuff, like uh, working for hours for different blog companies, like here, but I didn't really uh, find it as a, a nice uh, lifestyle for me. I want to solve different pro problems, not just those technical problems. I want to solve business problems and build businesses. So I traveled to Brazil, I like you did, and this is a, my good advice, just come to Brazil, drink a lot of Caipirinha and forget the plone. We are halfway there. And uh, nowadays I'm working for a startup. This is a bad advertisement by myself. So uh, I'm uh, working uh, on a, my own website, which gives me the freedom that I can every day go there, break the website, and uh, fix it again and break it again. But I don't need to ask permission from anybody. I don't need to uh, 
uh, talk with the customers and doing that kind of stuff. And I'm really much more happier working in that way. So when, when you are actually the person who is in the control. But let's go back to Plone. So even if I, uh, I'm a little bit skeptical about the future of the Plone, I, I like the future of the Plone community. And this is, uh, I see a lot of uh, beautiful people in this room. So uh, we have seen a beautiful community coming together. And uh, there are still uh, positive things in Plone. It's, it's like uh, there is no thing you can't do it. You can't, uh, when a customer calls you and you can ask, do you, can you do it with Plone? Yes, of course. But it's just a little bit, might be a cost a little bit more than the customer thought. But it's still like to have the component architecture and the permissions and stuff like that. Uh, the Drupal or a WordPress, they can't do it. Not to, or SharePoint. And the other two good thing with the Plone is that uh, uh, it has been around long, like the people who have been working with the Plone has been around for long. So they know the mistakes they have been done in the past and they are not going to make those mistakes again, I hope. So, <laughs> so uh, also one thing is that the people are very friendly unlike in some uh, other communities that when you ask a question, you are usually like, uh, read the fucking manual style answers, you don't get them here. But you might get the answer that, okay, we did it just like 10 years ago, but no one really does, doesn't want to touch that again, so you are on your own style answer. And uh, uh, it's, it's funny, I have found, a, I have been a around world in Plone events. I have met a lot of friends. I have, a, and I have actually a, have a personal friends, not just like a ISC friends. So I have been uh, gone around the world, meet their families, go to their cities, meet their uh, uh, girlfriends, have a fun together, and I'm really happy about that. And I think the people who are in this room, they are really interesting, like a uh, little bit crazy sometimes, or even a little bit more crazy for some people. But they are in interesting, I'm really... Uh, if, if, as uh, Eric told me yesterday that he wants to introduce uh, people, Probably not to Plone, but probably to the Plone community. And uh, I can still, still uh, claim, if, even if I'm not doing a Plone sites myself, that even if we have a like, uh, very uh, old city code, and we, we might have any more uh, Tim Fulton to fix SODP bugs for you, and uh, even if we are not the popular and uh, no one really cares about Plone, Plone anymore, it's still a very good solution to if you are building a government sites where you have uh, lots of people who can break a lot of things. Plone can fix that for you. It, it prevents people breaking things. And in any, any case, the Plone community, it's, it's the best open source community I know and I'm really happy that uh, I, I got to uh, come uh, opportunity to come Plone conference again. And I, th I think that's, that's my talk. And now if we have time for questions. Okay, uh, I think we have uh, 15 minutes left, so uh, we need to ask really long questions. Yeah. Huh? Uh, I think... Uh, Okay, the material here was asking that the, if the first uh, Plone product I ever created still works on Plone 4. But I think uh, I have not uh, received any bug reports, so I, I think it's working. <laughs> yeah, as, as you can see, the uh, Pl Plone uh, products, they have a long life cycle. Yes? Okay, okay, lost katana. Yeah, it's, 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 it's happens. <laughs> ah, okay, uh, last Plone conference, uh, which was uh, organized by 40 kids guys there. It was a really nice conference and uh, we had a really uh, fun time. And we, I, I stayed for the sprints after the conference. 
And on the last day, which is like uh, the day before my flight, this uh, pasta, I think of Franco there and uh, Lizzie and others got this wonderful idea that let's go to uh, have a beer on the local, uh, local uh, beer restaurant. And we went there and it happened to be the case that there was a chunk bingo there. So you could play a bingo and uh, everybody can bring in some chunk from home. That's where you can recycle the items. And uh, the rule of the bingo was that if you want to play, you need to be uh, buying the beers from the bar. So we, we played until the finals, and the final prize was the katana. And uh, in, the, in the final round, I think I was a little bit uh, lost with the beer. So I, I haven't noticed even that I had won the bingo already. And then some other person was watching my... Uh, Bingo ticket and told me, hey, you have won a katana. And I was like, whoa. And then, I, then we uh, uh, got the katana. We had a little bit fun in uh, Arnhem. We were running around the city and waving katana <laughs> with four guys who were totally drunk. And I don't know why police didn't come to take it away from us. But in any case, I, uh, I uh, woke up on the following morning. I still had my katana. And I was like uh, one hour hour too late for my flight. So I, I just picked a katana and ran to train and ran to airport and uh, it was everything, everything went fine. And uh, because I had brought some katanas or the swords to Finland before, it's okay if you just uh, declare it at the airport and they will give you a special package and you will get back it when, when, you, are at the, when you arrive. And that was well, okay. They actually gave me a boarding pass and uh, they uh, <laughs> let me uh, through the security section when, when the military police comes and asks if you are the guy who runs around the airport with the katana. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, 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 I have katana. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then they were asking that, uh, how did you get this katana? So I was thinking that, okay, yeah, that I was with the persons with, uh, from Argentina and the USA last time playing bingo. <laughs> but... Uh, I didn't, I didn't think that's a good answer for military police, so I just told that I won it in a competition. They took my katana away, they took my flight away, and they were uh, going to find me a ticket because you are not allowed to carry a weapon in the public places in Netherlands. I didn't know that, sorry. So uh, they probably thought that I'm a crazy uh, gringo, and they didn't give any ticket, and they just told me that... Uh, if you just go home and never tell this anybody, and we will let you go. <laughs> I, any more questions? <laughs> yeah, it's still in the Netherlands, I think. But I bought new one, so no problem. <laughs> yes. For Katan, uh, could you please repeat the question? Uh, if, if Poland is to succeed into the future, what do you think is the best? I, I think the best thing with the Plone is that we will just uh, let the Plone be as it is and just build a new CMS by, based on Pyramid and uh, lessons learned. Like uh, Pyramid was based how uh, SOAP 3 was done and they, they, they actually this time they did it right. So uh, in, uh, eventually there will be a Python CMS which is uh, as good as Plone and then we can just switch over. Sometimes it's, it's, it's just uh, rebooting the stuff, stuff like in movies, new superhero movies, Batman movies and stuff. It's, it's worth of that. Or are you the person who is going to fix those uh, bugs from 10 years ago, still in the 10 years in the future? No? Okay. Yes? More questions? I, I think the, the future of the Plone is, is, is it's well funded as long as Brazilian government stays as a government. So uh, maybe if you are doing Plone, you won't be uh, sort of work. But uh, if you don't want to do a Plone for the rest of your life, you can consider the options. It's, it's good for a very, very system, but in, in, in some point it, there will be some alternatives which are as good as Plone is now and you can then switch. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and actually, actually uh, you need to fill this uh, citizenship form to get a SIM card to get online, I think. I, I think uh, it will be, and I, I hope that it will be a market where it's uh, more open source and less Microsoft, because of uh, it, it, people need to build websites and uh, communicate and have knowledge management forever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, if, if, you, if, you, if you look my slides, first go to the, this uh, Bitcoin site, buy some Bitcoins, that's a good step. Because <laughs> money will stop functioning uh, sooner or later. And uh, then you can uh, migrate some uh, nice uh, South American country or Russia. <laughs> okay, do we still have uh, questions or time? I can now translate the same as uh, in Portuguese. Okay. Oh, one more question. I think uh, it's 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 uh, plone is like a sexual disease. When you get it, you can't get rid of it easily. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if if you. If you keep uh, communicating with people, you will spread the disease further. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we are on the, on the same boat right now. And, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's viral marketing. I have heard it. <laughs> so uh, I think I will be visiting a Plone conference in the future, not, just, not for the Plone, but because of the people. So you get you have antibiotics, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? How much time we have? Where is the time time guy? Are you coming to Italy next year? Was the was the event was the same event as I was this year in Italy? Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, maybe. I, I would rather go to some other country. I have a countries where I haven't visited yet. If I have money and time. Yeah, the yeah. those are actually uh, stickers. They are not the countries where I have been visiting, but those are the countries where I have, I have been developing Plone. So. <laughs> Uh, I think it was the local beer, I can tell the four digits, I want this to Finland, import it, it's called, uh, I was drinking beer called the Hell and Damnation. And the next day was Hell and Damnation. Okay, I think we are done here and we will uh, move to our next English speaking uh, room. <laughs>